guys, good afternoon. Welcome back. If you've been tuning in all day, I so appreciate it. And I know this the interviewees that we're talking to do too. Welcome back to Entrepreneurial Live Interviews with Connie Fuchsa. I am Connie Fuchsa. And today, this afternoon, uh, for our final interview, I have the immense privilege to introduce you to a lady that has um, entered my life um, almost a year ago. Um, just thrilled to know this lady. She is so talented, it has so much great um, information, experiences. She has uh, just a really interesting background and the things she's doing right now are all about that entrepreneurial spirit that I really wanna share with you guys. And you know, we're doing this series for that exact reason. We're trying to share with you um, different perspectives from different people in different entrepreneurial worlds um, that maybe they aren't a business owner, maybe they aren't a business leader, maybe they're just somebody who's thinking about trying to start a business, maybe they've tried before. And so really we're just trying to share with you to let you know about some of these amazing people that are in our community and in the world, but also more importantly, that you can do exactly the things that they're doing. So today I wanna to introduce you this afternoon to my friend, Gloria Smith, who uh, just has a really long resume of amazing things. But more importantly today, I want her just to, uh, I wanna focus her on you know some of the things that she's done and give you some of her story and why she's gotten from there to here. So Gloria, welcome and thank you so much for being on with us today. Thank you, Patty, for the invitation. I'm really excited about sharing, hopefully some information that will help others in their journey. Awesome. So what I want you to do for us first is tell us a little bit about you. Tell us where, you know, a little bit of back history. Where did you come from? Where, uh, why did you make some choices that you did to get to the point that you are today? And where exactly is that? And what are you doing right now? Well, I grew up in Rochester, New York, went away to college in Rhode Island, came back, started a career with IBM, um, did that for 14 plus years, had a child as a single mom, um, moved down to the D.C. area so that my son and my nephew could grow up together. At one point in Poughkeepsie, New York, I attempted to become an independent beauty consultant. It was not the right time in my life for a lot of different reasons. And so I tried. I didn't fail. I just walked away. Mm -hmm. And um, then my son, I left corporate America so I could be home with him a little bit and yeah. did odd jobs to keep a roof over our heads, including some technical writing. So I was sort of an entrepreneur in that I was mm -hmm. doing a job for another person on my schedule. Um, so I've got a heavy computer background in the software side, technical writing, also some education. I was an instructor for IBM for a while. I also taught in a high school, in a private high school, and that's where I also started my real heavy work with children. I always babysat along the way, but I became a dorm mom, and from there I became a living nanny, and then a part-time nanny while I worked retail, trying to figure out who I was and what I wanted to do, and again, the child helping others um, is basically my gift from God. That's my talent. And that's my strong point is I'm very good with children. I haven't met one that I couldn't make a rapport with immediately, much to the surprise of many parents. But, you know, when they hire somebody to take care of their kids, that's really what they want. They don't always know it. Um, and then I moved to Southern Maryland and met a woman at church who was a new Mary Kay independent beauty consultant. And I went to her debut party and had a horrible rash reaction from something, story of my life, and did not try a single product. She asked me to look at some videos. I'm in a new place in my life. I'm a mature woman. And I'm looking at these videos about all of these women at various stages of life, fresh out of college, still in college, no. kids, no kids, um, single, married. And I'm looking at these videos at them starting a Mary Kay business and getting that pink Cadillac. And mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to do this. And as they say, the rest is history. That was June, July of last year. And I'm working towards my pink Cadillac. I'm going to achieve that goal and hopefully help others along the way so they can do the same. 
That is fantastic. I mean, I just learned so much. I mean, I've known you since that June, July, and I just learned so many things about you that I had absolutely no idea. You know, first of all, let me just go back to um, you saying that when you were doing the technical writing, I guess you sort of thought that you might have been an entrepreneur then, but you probably didn't look at it that way. But guys, this is exactly the spirit that I'm talking about. So when you're in a, in a, in a zone in your life, a space in your life that you don't know, um, you know that you need to do something. And in your case, it was more out of a need to take care of your family, but you also found a niche on a thing that you could take care of to make that, um, that need taken care of. So you figured out how to implement something that you had a uh, ability to do and turn it into a way to create income in your family. And that is one of the many facets of the entrepreneurial spirit that I'm just so fascinated with. And, and absolutely you are an entrepreneur. Did you, uh, um, you know, there's so many different levels of this and this is exactly why I wanted to do this series because I, I just love hearing these stories about people figuring these things out, right? Figuring out how to uh, take things, their life and, and things in their own hands and make, make changes that are positive for them. And then the story about, you know, becoming a, a beauty consultant and then going to the next, uh, going away from that because it didn't work for you. And now coming back to it, even though the product didn't sit well with you, you still saw the value in the business and decided that this business was for you. So tell me a little bit more about that. Well, um, working the hours that make sense for me, mm -hmm. there's a lot behind the scenes being an independent beauty consultant or an independent anything. Um, mm -hmm. the, the customer sees one or two hours where you are doing two to three hours behind the scenes, mm -hmm. whether it's personal training, whether it's dealing with your inventory, whether it's writing letters, um, mailing. Oh, there are so many things behind the scenes, but I can do those any time of the day. Likewise, my face-to-face -face time with customers, which now is more on the internet, but it's working, um, those I can base on their availability. If I have someone that their schedule only gives them Sunday afternoons, in fact, my very first facial party was a Sunday afternoon, not my favorite time of the day to be working, to be doing money-making things. Try to keep the Sabbath um, holy, but... If I can't keep the Sabbath, I know in my heart that I'm honoring the Sabbath because if your ox falls in a ditch on a Sunday, do you leave them there till Monday or do you take care of it? And that's scripture, not quoted correctly, but that is scripture. So well, I, I love this concept of, you know, you're bringing in all of these pieces about the entrepreneurial spirit. Um, so first of all, that alone, you can make your own schedule. So not just the behind the scenes stuff. And I want to talk about that too, because it's so powerful, but the making your own schedule, it seems a very coy conversation when people who do not experience it or do not go through these, these processes processes quite yet in their life for them to grab onto this concept. But making your own schedule is um, there's very much ebbs and flows to this. You know, when you first sit down to make your own schedule, you're trying to decide, oh, my God, I want to be available every day, all day to make things work. And you hit on a great point that there's certain things in your life that do not that you need to make the choice about should they regulate your schedule or not. But ultimately having your own schedule as an entrepreneur being so important. So that's such a powerful um, relation that you just shared with us. But the bigger piece that I want to share is the behind the scenes, because the one thing that most people don't understand and being an entrepreneur for you know more than 30 years, um, I that's why I like to share some of these things because somebody starting a business, we talked about this earlier with someone else, um, you need to tap into other resources sometimes to make sure that the behind the scenes stuff don't always take away from the passion that you have, but that there is behind the scenes things that need to happen. And those are also two things that you have to do to prep to be the best you with your customers. So yes. give us a little bit more about that. Maybe not necessarily exactly what you do behind the scenes, but you know, sort of how you set up your day and how you work around those kinds of things and adding in the schedule of when people need to see you. Well, I'm still getting that figured out. I don't have it as crisp as I would like. 
Um, we have our Thursday training meetings. So that's 90 minutes that's fixed every week plus mm -hmm. the travel time. Um, I try to spend some time reading all of the messages that come through to me from various, whether it's an email or a Facebook post, um, a text message, an instant messenger request. I have to spend time each day to read through all of that. I have to, you know, check the inventory. I'm a little controlling of things. And so I, you know, I check my inventory on the regular, but I need to check that against orders that I've made versus orders that have gone out to customers from my personal inventory. Mm -hmm. So there's that aspect of it. But I think the training, there's so many ways to get training. And it, again, depends on your industry. But we have our formal training on Thursdays. There's training online because we have an absolutely incredible company that provides resources beyond what I could have imagined 30 plus years ago, which when I tried it before, there just was not the resources that are available now. So technology training, face-to-face -face training. And then when you're actually with the customer, you're not always doing something you've ever done before. So you're mm -hmm. actually on the job training. And fortunately, I've, I've had wonderful customers that they don't know what I don't know. So <laughs> I can. Well, but the, 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 theme in, the theme in all this is really cool because, you know, the thing that people don't understand as an entrepreneurial side of their life is when you jump into something like this, you know, you want to make that widget or you want to be a skincare consultant, but you don't know all the pieces that go in the behind the scenes. But when you start doing them, the cool part is, you know, immediately if doing those things are things that are going to be um, if they, if they charge you up as well, if they're part of that end result for you and that make that happen. And um, so I love hearing about this, the, the behind the scenes, because I think it's so very relevant to people understanding that spirit is, you know, people who are not uh, entrepreneurial spirits, totally very important part of our world, but they need to understand all the things that go into that exactly as you're talking about that behind the scenes. So I just love this reference and this information that you're talking about with that. There's so one other point that uh -huh. I don't remember where I read it. I don't know if it was in our company literature or in something else I was reading about being an entrepreneur. And it talked about in the beginning, if it doesn't hurt, <laughs> you're kind of not doing it right because yeah. You, you have to stress yourself almost to the point of breaking to where you have to make the decision, am I going to go forward with this? And, um, you know, there are aspects of this that, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt physically, but it's like I'm stretching myself. And when you stretch yourself, it's learning, it's the exercise. And, and it's like, whew, this is a lot, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to push through and I'm going to doing it on the other side. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And you know, when you talked earlier about failure, you know, we've talked about that a couple of times with different entrepreneurs and the, 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 the common theme is that never is a fact unless you, unless you don't keep trying, you don't keep going. And, and whether it's in that business, the lady I was talking to before you, I mean, she found um, making some pivots were the better move for her, maybe, you know, different things. So there's no such thing as that unless you put your head under the pillow and you're all done. And that's when that's when you're you're not being your best self. So um, so let me move into, um, you know, we talked about what kind of business you had. We know how long that you've uh, you've been in it because you shared that with us. But tell me and I've talked about this with some other people about your superpower. So when I talk about superpower and, and if you've watched some of the videos, you got it. You know, I've repeated this a couple of times, but I don't mean like what you're magical about. Instead, I want to know and I want everybody else to know because it, I think it really resonates when you start thinking about what you want to do. I want to know what gives you goosebumps when you're working with somebody or you're working your business. What in your business just like gives you chill bumps all over or set your hair on fire or just tingles you because you're so excited that this is happening in your business. What is that superpower? What is that thing that you know makes you just keep going and going and going? I think... I think what it is for me is my ability to assist others, to teach others, to train others, to share the knowledge that I have, um, to help them get to their next step. Uh, and that takes me to, I hadn't been in the business 
that long and I had shared with our director something that I had done and she asked me, could you share that at the meeting tonight? I'm like, okay. So there I am at the meeting training other consultants on a tool that was available to all of us, but it was something that either they had overlooked or they didn't realize it was there. And part of that is because of my computer savvy and like I could maneuver our website to find the things that I needed to help me be a better um, consultant. And so to be able to train and share that um, when I was training at IBM, I, it was someone at church that I went to on a regular basis. And I was in another division of the company in that geography. And he actually called my manager and said, I want Gloria to come and be a teacher in our division. Wow. And I was like, okay, my boss is like, oh, somebody's trying to recruit you out from under me. But what it was, was re- apparently the way that I teach, the way I can present things, I can meet where other people's minds are and get them the information they need without it hurting, I guess. Um, and so, you know, I, I was recruited by a coworker to be a, a Girl Scout leader for their child. And, you know, and that's teaching position. I was recruited. There's a common theme here for you. I mean, I can just, we can all see in your face, like, <laughs> as you're talking about it, that like glow just starting to show <laughs> up and your cheeks just popping up. And, you know, I mean, that's exactly what this is about. That question is that superpower is like, what is, what is it that not only that you're really good at, but that makes you feel amazing? And so, you know, there's a common theme you were talking about. Um, uh, you know, uh, doing technical writing or teaching people to put to do skincare, teaching people how to use tools, teaching children or connecting with children. You're connecting with them because you're relating on their level. And that's what somebody in a kind of teaching environment does teaching a Girl Scout troop. So it's it's so amazing to see the transformation in seconds in someone's face and energy. <laughs> tap into that. So I want you guys to all see this because that's how this is, how this comes about. That's how this entrepreneurial spirit works, guys. You know, when you, you know, you know, I was talking, one of the people I was talking to earlier, you know that you have to have this widget. It's this thing. It's this action. It's this um, uh, uh, process that you do that you know ha- the world has to do it. If no one else does it, you have to have it, right? So you are like, I've got to do this, but I just don't know how to do it. You have to tap into that exact energy that Gloria just showed you because that's exactly where it is, guys. I mean, it's that thing, whatever it is that's your superpower, that is what will get you through any pieces of this puzzle and tapping back and forth into that is where it is. So I just love seeing you do that and hearing as you're talking about all this different pieces of that. That was just super cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw that, but if not, go back and watch because you can see it on the replay. It was really cool. So um, so tell us what, you know, you told us a little bit about your pink Cadillac scenario, but tell us uh, incrementally, like what else is happening to you through this business? Um, you're obviously growing, but what else is happening? Because somewhere in between now and then, um, other things are happening that are, are growing you. And, and so what do those things look like? What are you, what are you getting from all of this being, having that entrepreneurial spirit? Well, again, the, a good part of it is sharing <clears throat> and in our industry, sharing the concept of skincare and taking care of yourself mm-hmm. and then going from just the basic skincare to keep your face and your body healthy. And then to, I'll call it the glamour where we're now going to apply some color. And as I was getting ready and I put my lipstick on and, and I looked at my sister, she goes, Oh yeah, definitely. You need the lipstick. (laughs) Right. Right. I never used to be a lipstick wearer either, but it does make a difference. Yes. And, uh, but sharing that. So to get towards the Cadillac, I need to be able to share this with enough, enough others that they then want to get a little of my enthusiasm and then share that with some others. And, Mm -hmm. The, the more people that learn how to take care of their skin, that want to share the opportunity of the company with others, that I can build a team, I can build a customer base and share this, I mean, this company is the best. And so they're helping me to get 
to a point where I can drive a car that I don't have to pay for. And I'm and you helping can teach other people how to do what you're doing, which is what you are masterful at. <laughs> and so that's uh, to getting from where I am now to the pink Cadillac. Again, it's the sharing, the teaching, the encouragement. Um, mm -hmm. I've been told I'm very good at encouraging people and mm -hmm. whatever they're struggling with, I can find the words to help them ease the struggle and get to their next step. Well, clearly you, I mean, you're talking about one of your really great sweet spots is working with children. And clearly uh, that is, you know, a definitely necessary um, ability to have in that kind of scenario. So that's really cool. So um, when we talk about the business that you have, what's the one question that people ask you most commonly when you talk about what you do for a living? Oh, that was I mean, I knew this question was coming and I, I was thinking well, about we, that. Well, we did have a little bit of questions in advance, guys. Everybody <laughs> needed to see the questions in advance because some people were a little anxious about them. But um, yeah, this is one of them because, you know, as I have done as um, a coach, when I work with people, one of the things I try to get you to do to be able to tell your story is tap into the things that people who talk to you want to know. Because just because you know it doesn't mean everybody needs to know about it. So that's why I asked this is it's sort of triggering you to think about what are the questions that people ask. But the number one question I'm curious, and we all want to know. Um, I think the number one question is why? Why do I need to be so cognizant of what I put on my face, the frequency? Mm -hmm. And I think actually it's the SPF. The, you know, why do I need the day cream? Why do I need to make sure that my skin is protected from the sun? You don't realize the amount of sun exposure you get in and out of your car, to the grocery store, to the house, to your friends, and that that damages your skin, even though you're only five minutes in it. And it's a cumulative effect. And so by using proper skin care from the get go, and I actually have um, a 10 year old who's using um, one of our products. One nice. of our um, because her mother wanted her to start taking care of her skin now. And I think it's just, it's never too late. It's never too late to start. You can fix damage that's already been done, but the younger you start, the prevention, the infamous an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you can never teach these things too soon. I mean, it's no different than brushing your teeth or washing your hands or all of those things that we already do to take care of the rest of our body. Why are those of us ladies and, and gentlemen too, not taking care of our skin on our face? And then we get to 50 and we go, good God, why do I have all these wrinkles? <laughs> well, you know, it's sort of cause and effect. You took, you have the opportunity to do it. It's never too early. So yeah. Really good information. I like that too. I like the the question and how you, um, you again you're going through the training and you're talking to us about what that um, the pieces of that that we need to know that educational piece because then we can understand it a little better and relate it to our our personal situation. So good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, so how do you share your not just the opportunity but also what you do for a living? How do you share that with other people? Meaning night. Not like networking, but do you um, do you reach out to people that you know? Do you reach out to people that you don't know? Do you actually share information on social media? You talked about that a little bit earlier. So give us a little background or insight on that. Well, I started out with my address book and mm -hmm. my address book went back um, a whole lot of years. Some people that I hadn't communicated with in, um, oh gosh, some of them five and 10 and 15 years. But Great I, reason I, to touch people. <laughs> I had an address or a phone number or an email and I reached out to all of these people. Many have not responded, but I will still continue to reach out. But, you know, intermittently to just say, yeah. I'm still here. Are you going to let me know? Um, but again, my very first facial was one of my former students and she graduated in 2001. I think the year after my son, 2000, 2001, somewhere around there. And I hadn't, you know, I went to her wedding um, when she had her first baby. We got together, her and her mom and sister and I. So I got to meet the baby. And then it had probably been five years since we had touched base. And she's like, sure. Yeah. So it's 
I, I started with friends. I'm still not good with the stranger, stranger danger, uh, <laughs> but I am reaching out in every method that I have for my address book that goes back literally 25 years. And if they're so still- in this changing environment a little bit with what's going on right now, how are you using social media to help you get your thoughts out and deal with, with that kind of thing? Well, I do have a group on Facebook and so I can do um, promotions that involve monetary um, aspects. I do that in my private group um, and okay. on, on my Facebook page, my regular page, I will post little blurbs about a product that just shows, okay, here's a product, here's its features. And then I've had some people reach back, oh, Gloria, I didn't know you were doing Mary Kay. I'm like, yeah. So then then we turned it into a private conversation. Um, nice. We just had some very nice training from our national sales director, and I invited some of my friends to that group. And I got a couple sales from there. And one is a friend in Utah who used to live in McLean when I lived in McLean, but we've stayed in touch. I haven't physically mm-hmm. seen her in I can't tell you how many years. But she ordered, she joined into this event that we had this week and, um, you know, and she put in order in. So she did her order strictly through my Mary Kay page. Nice. So, you know, I just got a note from the company. You have a new customer. I'm like, that works for me. Very nice. There there are many avenues with, you know, again, with our company, we don't do dollars on our regular page we invite people to a private group then they kind of know that they're in that group because i'm a mary Kay independent beauty consultant and Mm -hmm. so then they know they're going to get sales offers you know i have birthdays that i send out information they can get a birthday discount um beginning of the year we did the um the thanksgiving you know the day after thanksgiving but ours is a pink sale rather than a black friday so there are a lot of ways through the social media. And then we also have email blasts. Um, I have a, a mail merge program that I can use so I can create my own uh, information and, and it'll be automatically personalized. So, you know, right. there's nothing worse than getting a dear cafe au lait to a gmail.com. I want to so do this as opposed to, hey, Jennifer, how would you like to take a look at this product and be my test you know, person? So, you know, personalized emails. And if you have, you can either use our system, but that's only the customers that you have there. But that whole big blast list that I have, I can send a personalized letter to three. Very nice. Very nice. So you figured out definitely different ways to tap into your customers, but also other contacts that you have. So that's really cool. Yes. So in... In an effort to keep us on on a good schedule, one thing I wanted to do, and I've asked a lot of others, is um, uh, what do you, I have two questions. We're going to do kind of quick, rapid fire a little bit. The first is, what do you, where do you see yourself in one to three years with your business and your entrepreneurial spirit that you've got going on right now? Um, in one to three years, um, let's just say the three years, I'm going to be driving a pink Cadillac. I will have cars prior to that. But three years from now, I'm gonna be in that pink Cadillac, and I'm tell, gonna tell us my- about. Yeah, I I hear that. Tell us a little bit about what you're with the bling that you're wearing. Oh yes, this um, I think this is the consistency one. By mm-hmm. doing a certain wholesale um, order uh, six months in a row, I, I think that's what this one is. Um, you get rewarded with various jewelry. The company nice. is fantastic and that every month that you do that wholesale value, you get some treat from the company. Most of it's That's been jewelry. Incredible. A lot That's of earrings, a couple of necklaces, a couple of bracelets. Um, nice. But every month that you meet a certain amount, and again, that's also a little bit of the pain because I'm like, I'm tweaking. Okay, I haven't had that many orders coming in, but I'm going to make sure that I get that order to the company because A, I want the bling. I want the recognition. You, I, I personally have our own little thing about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I just, um, yeah, that I, I'm that's great. Pink Cadillac. All right. My All last my question. Bling. My last question, you may have heard me ask other people, I think it's just kind of a fun wrap it around uh, a bow at the end of the conversation, is if you got stuck in an elevator with three people, what would you say that you did for a living? If someone says, hey, go around the room or around the elevator while you're stuck in there. 10 words or less, what do you do for a living? 
independent beauty consultant with Mary Kay, um, helping women make the best of their lives. Awesome. I love it. I love it. So tell me, tell everybody who's here how they can find you, because if anybody needs Mary Kay skincare and does not have a consultant, uh, Gloria is definitely somebody who can help you. So tell our viewers how they can find you, Miss Gloria. MaryKay.com, M-A-R-Y-K-A-Y.com slash Cafe Olay 2, as in coffee with milk. Cafe Olay <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. She taught me a little bit about that, by the way. There's a little backstory there, but we do have a little bit of a competition, her and I, but she is a, an excellent, amazing entrepreneur. And as you guys can see, wrapping this up, this lady has touched so many different things and everything she touches, it has the common theme, right? So this is what I wanted you guys to see is that entrepreneurs figure out what their superpower is and put it to work. And so, and putting it to work and bringing themselves joy. And she's touched children and executives and um, a, a national corporation be successful and technical writing to keep, you know, her lights on at her house. And she's figured out how to tap into that spirit to make things work based on what her passion is and what that why is or why she's turning things around. It ultimately goes down to that uh, entrepreneurial spirit. So Gloria, I can't thank you enough for your time. Today. You have such a, an amazing energy and I just love our connection and I really appreciate your time and being on today. So thank you so very much. Thank you right back. All right, girlfriend, I'll talk to you again real soon. And guys, uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, this is our last interview for today. There's a couple on Monday and then next week we're going to get right back at it. So I'm going to start posting again who we're going to see next week. If you know somebody that is actively or that is working on entrepreneurial things that you think uh, we need to hear about, I want to meet them. I want to talk to them. So please have them message me or you message me and let's get that going. So Miss Gloria, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and guys, I'll see you again soon. I'm Connie Fuchsa. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.